And the two men in front of you about to make their move. Here they go. This should be an absolutely enthralling affair. Joined once again now by Leroy and, of course, Big Man Lethal. We're slotted back in. First up, how do you think the series is going to go? We've got the players on stage. It still looks amazing. And they are going to be fired up for this one. Yeah, we've got a lot of different decks in now. Mysterious, very aggressive lineup. He's had it before. And I did mention to him that how do you reckon you're going to do with such an aggressive lineup? And he says, no, you think we'll do OK. It's very, very consistent at this stage. Of course, he's got the token Driddy, Odd, Pally, and Rogue. And of course, that Death Row Hunter. And one thing to take into account now is the fact that how long it will last against this matchup. But it can easily swing in both ways. And that's true, Leroy. Yeah, I'm fancying Duncan's chances in this as well. It's pretty 50 50, but he's again bought one of those lineups that's just very good within the pack. He's not trying to target anything, he's just trying to win some solid games of Hearthstone. He's got Evenlock, Mally Druid, Odd Rogue himself and he's got his own Secret Hunter, sort of a board control special that. So some pretty tight games I think they're going to be this afternoon. Could bode for some interesting Hearthstone, but something that's always a little bit mysterious. He's a enigma himself. It is mysterious. And we're going to find out some facts about him. Let's get straight into the interview. So I'm mysterious in the game, and I'm playing for MLM Gaming. What put me in Hearthstone, uh, basically where are my friends, because they started playing the game and they keep coming telling me, oh, you should try this game, it's really awesome. So I tell you, okay, I'm gonna try. And since that, I'm playing almost every day. I'm not really worried to face anyone. I just think for the moment, uh, Taos Monster, which is my teammate, might be probably one of the hardest opponents because he practiced so much this year. So I just don't really want to face him. So if I manage to beat all my opponents and win the competition, that will be a real achievement for me because I've played this competition, it's the fifth time I'm here and I never won. I've always been really close, second place, third place. So I will be so happy actually. Mysterious. A lot like Rey Mysterio, he's going to look to try and 619 the competition, but will he succeed, boys? Well, he's been very consistent in throughout every single season. He's made every single final without fail. He's had three third place finishes. He's had a second one. Still due that first place finish. And, you know, this could be the event for him. There's certainly nothing mysterious about his finishes and uh, whether he can play well or not. He's definitely consistent. He's definitely playing well at a lot of these events all the time. So uh, I'd give him a shot. I'd always uh, have him as an outside chance. Nice. And now we have something very special for you. The big man himself, the master of meltdown, it's Duncan. We have an interview with him from earlier to see his thoughts going into this explosive matchup. Let's take a look. My name is Duncan. My player name is also Duncan. I'm playing for Meltdown, which is an esports bar that I manage in London. It was a reasonably quick path from getting into it to playing competitively. I actually almost qualified for season one of the Premiership about three months after I started playing. I lost a lost match to Holly Leroy, and the rest is history. So I think the thing I'm happiest about this season has been my lineups. I think have been much better than the previous seasons. I think the previous seasons I was quite predictable and that people kind of always knew I was going to bring quite controlly stuff. So I've really tried to mix it up this season. And I wouldn't say there's anyone that I'm worried about facing, you know, based on who they are. There's definitely, you know, there's some good players here. Ball control is clearly the favorite. Apart from that, I think Toast Monster is really, really good. For a kind of dark horse, someone like Dead Draw hasn't played too many tournaments, but he's very high on ladder consistently. He went through in the group stage, so I'd actually quite like to play like someone like Ball Control. I've actually never played him in a tournament, which is really strange when we've both been around the UK scene for so many years. It'd be great to win. It's obviously, it's always nice. I mean, in Hearthstone, a lot of the time you're kind of measured on you know top fours, top eights, and things just because because of the nature of the game. But yeah, it's obviously nice to, to have a trophy. You know, it'd be nice to nice to put it behind the bar when I get back to London to be able to say you know you did it. It would be a really nice thing. Mysterious. Is he about to get dunked on by Duncan? Oh, I like that. Yeah? That was uh, catchy. Nice, mate. That's what I do. I sprinkle those in there. But how do you reckon this game's going to go, boys? Obviously, this is a spicy affair. Our third game of the day as we work towards the end. This has got to be filled with emotions, right? Yeah, definitely. Uh, Duncan is, again, another familiar face in the Prem. He's made top four last time he's in the Prem. It's his third season. And getting here, you know, he defeated Dan, Osher and Coldhand. And Funny enough, one of the people he did lose to was your good self, Nick. Yeah. The thing about Duncan is that I think I have the measure of him in a weird way. Even if he brings a lineup that's favoured against me, I've always been historically good at knocking him out or stopping him getting into the tournaments originally. I'm not here to do that this year. So I think that he is your dark horse. If you want one, if you're not going for ball control or toast monster, pick Duncan. 
think he's uh, quite a good player, tidy. The master of meltdowns. And we do actually have the picks and bans now coming through as well. So why don't we break these down and have the clear picture of this matchup? Yeah, one thing to take into account straight away is that the odd pally, no surprise there of that getting banned. And one thing from Duncan's end as well is that Mali Druid uh, has been taken down. And to be fair, I don't think that's too much of a surprise, in my opinion. No, th the way that it sort of has worked out is that all the decks are quite even against each other. There's uh, no particularly strong or weak matchups. And Duncan's banned the Paladin because uh, it gives him a little bit of an edge. And, and Mysterious has banned the Druid instead of the Warlock because it probably gives his Rogue, which is one of the decks that is a little bit less favourable in the matchup, uh, more of a chance of getting a win. Well, it seems like it's almost time to get underway with a matchup as we are going to be diving in. It's Duncan versus Mysterious. Can the Eminem man cause a barbecue and crisp his opposition, or is he going to go down in a ball of fire? Only time will tell. Lethal, Leroy, take it away. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Jackie. And surprise, not a little bit of a mirror matchup, you could say. Not. Full on tilt, but we'll have to see how this goes from here on the first oh, series. This is a full on mirror. The only difference between their two lists is that Duncan's running two snake traps and Mysterious is running two wandering monsters instead. So it's going to come down to, as a lot of hunter mirrors tend to do sometimes, going first. The bow is it's a card that I'm told you don't want to keep, but it's always the comfort keep for me. I've played a lot of mid range hunter before, uh, lots of m budget lists in the past, and I, I love to keep an eagle horn bow, especially in mirrors, but. I can appreciate that actually it's probably not statistically the best card in the deck and you probably don't want it. Yeah, I think back in the day when you're talking about that mid-range hunter, it was nice to have that eagle bow just to kind of like eliminate the minions, kind of keep ball control, more, not more to your side, but just keep it at bay just to when that minion's on that one side. So it was understandable why he wanted to keep it at back anyway. Yeah, and, and Mysterious now, even though he's gone second, which is obviously uh, historically weaker in the mirror matchup because Duncan hasn't had a one drop and he doesn't even look like he's going to have a two drop that isn't a rubbish trap. It's going to be that Mysterious ends up on the front foot, which uh, sets uh, an interesting precedent for the rest of the games. He might even bluff an explosive trap here, which I would have liked to have seen, which would have made Mysterious not attack into uh, oh, into the hero and, and, thus, and thus keep the trap up. And depending on what Mysterious gets out of those two companions, it could be very aggressive, of course, if he does get anything, like obviously that two four with a plus one and all the other minions, or even a couple of four two, um, right straight away, you know, it could end up being very aggressive to begin with. But you can see there from Duncan's position, you've got that explosive trap to deal with that. If that is the case, does have an ego bow, so eagle bow, even though you know we're speaking about it where it's not needed straight away. He has it now. That's fair enough, and he's got that howl master to tauten up anything he does have on board, just yeah. to keep mysterious at bay. Yeah, I mean, what could have happened there is if he'd have. Uh if Mysterious had gone for the bear shark as opposed to the, the animal companion, the, the bow would have come out and been very useful, quite a big a big deal in the matchup. But as it stands, he's probably going to equip the bow this turn, hit the 2-3 and look to eventually roll the board around to his way. He's got the spell stone, Mysterious doesn't have it. He can buff that up and potentially, potentially create a swing that's quite big before uh, things get out of hand or he loses control of the board. That's right, and of course he will go for that trade. He may not have all control at all, but this is what I mean about with that weapon. At least that way you can keep him on terms, keep it a nice stint until he feels it's absolutely right. And of course, he has an animal companion on his of his own, so if he does get a 4-2 or anything like that, he can trade. But with that taunt being up now, it's going to be a little bit more of a pain for Duncan to deal with. Yeah, and with that pickup as well, Duncan's not having the best of times with his hand. He obviously missed his one, he missed his two. That's how hunters go. If you If you miss those early turns, you find yourself staring down a board where Mysterious has got his 2-4 and his 5-4 and, and suddenly you're taking far too much damage for you to be able to deal with it quickly or, or sort of efficiently. It could be that next turn when Mysterious just plays potentially the Razor Moor in a hero power or the Bear Shark if he wants to put a bit more on board, it could be that things get super out of control super quickly before Duncan can actually use the Spellstone and turn things back to his advantage. Yeah, it could actually be quite quick this game, or it could be quite prolonged. It depends how Duncan is actually going to deal with this. But if he actually got a 4 2 from then, then it would have been great because he could have traded. But that taunts can deal with it for now. But looking at this, he can kill Commander if he really wanted to, or maybe he can adapt one of his minions to, even for poison, just so he can at least get a semi decent trade, you could say. But a weapon for now, not too necessary. I like the kill command here because what it means is it means that he can play the. The, the three drop and the two drop next turn, which uses his mana, which is what you want to do. You want to play all of your cards as quickly as possible. And it, it puts on sort of the most pressure in a way that minimizes how useful the Eaglehorn bow is as well for his opponent. If this does go long, 
they've both got Deathstalker Rexar in their hands and things could get very long-winded as they're both building beasts and being slower on the tempo. Yeah, it was a shame, but at least now we can get one of those Helmmasters to good use. Before, he had them both in his hands, and it's like you mentioned before, where you know, he couldn't get many of those one or two mana drops, and that would have complemented the Helmmaster early on, but sadly for him, he never had the opportunity, but now he does. So at least he's got that first dime all down and managed to get rid of his uh, one of his Houndmasters straight away. But he still does have a second one, which he can play if it stays alive, but looking unlikely. With the Razor Maw here, Mysterious could go for a Divine Shield or Health. And if he does that and he takes a trade and then uses the bow to kill the Houndmaster, he still makes his board uh, in, in, like, so strong against Deathstalker Rexile, which is probably the only way that the Hunter's going to clear him, that it's just, it's just uh, an insurmountable lead. His options aren't very good, though. He's got Stealth, which he won't pick. He'll be choosing between Poisonous, where he'll be deciding whether three attack is actually enough or whether he wants to trade and stuff for Death Rattle, which, again, secures his board just not as well against a uh, potential Deathstalker Rexile that's coming out sort of on this turn or, or in future turns. Yeah, I think that made perfect sense. Of course, you could have made it Poisonous, but then again, that minion already has the damage it needs anyway with that five attack, so it wasn't really too necessary. And of course, he's still got that weapon anyway for any more trades. And one thing to take into account as well, I think earlier, maybe he wanted something like the plus three health or something like that just to yeah. keep it alive. Yeah, plus three health would have been really good. As it stands, he's now in a position where his board is, well, being cleared except for a couple of two or oh, one ones, as they'll be. Uh, his Houndmaster's not going to land. His Bear Shark looks sort of okay. It's, it's quite a tricky turn, this one. I sort of fancy going Bear Shark, Mole, Hero Power, putting in and sort of damage and pressure, keeping your hero power instead of playing the Rexar because you've ended up in an aggressive spot. But he'll be considering the, the opportunity to Deathstalker Rexar and draw the game out as well. Yeah, that's a very valid point there. He wants to try and keep the board as wide as possible just to keep Duncan you know, on his toes a little bit. Even when he, uh, if Duncan does put that explosive trap down, it's only going to take out 2-1-1. One, one. It's not going to be viable at all at this stage. But look at his hand. Not the greatest from what I've seen, but at least he's got that hero power to try and do something with this, but it's like you mentioned before, it could be a little bit too little too late. Yeah, to me it looks a bit like that, as he's got a fair amount of damage coming in next turn. 14, ex exactly. So, if Duncan doesn't play the trap here, it's just lethal. And if he does play the trap, what Mysterious can do is he can he can buff his, his Dire Mole, he can go face with everything, put Duncan down to two health, and then say, well, next turn I'm just going to press my hero power and kill you. This is it really, isn't yeah. it? And even with the uh, hero power from Mysterious anyway, it's only going to do two damage to all, it's going to make absolutely no difference. And he might as well just play for face at this stage. He might as well just keep the pressure on, make sure he keeps Duncan on his toes, like I mentioned before. Because, yeah, you're right though, it's, it's not really too much he can do here. And with that hero power and with the Hunter not being able to get anything in terms of uh, some health back, yeah, this could obviously be a uh, Mysterious game here. The alternative line that he's probably looking at, see, here, is that he's going to go for a Deathstalker Rexar clear, which secures his board better and plays around the potential out that Duncan can get a lifesteal beast with Rush next turn to heal him before he dies to just the hero power. I'm I'm not so sold on it. I I, I think it's probably neither here nor there. It's it's so much damage coming in that uh that he's probably trying to play around maybe wandering monster out, other outs, but but uh I, I suspect that it's good enough anyway. Yeah, that's more than good enough. Of course, Mysterious knew he had an explosive trap the whole time in the process of elimination and realised that, you know, he might as well put those one ones to good use, which he has done. He's done a perfect job, made the explosive trap completely useless, you could say. And even now, like you were right, maybe it could have carried on hero powering, but even then, he can just use that Houndmaster and finish things off if he doesn't get a taunt on. Well, the Wandering Monster top deck's interesting because it's given... It's given... Duncan a sort of uh, a period of time. So Mysterious has got rid of his hero power, which means that he's no longer putting on as much pressure. I mean, for example, if it had put Duncan down for two, Duncan would be forced to play in a, in a different way last turn. So he's, he's not put his foot fully on the gas, and this could result in, well, it could result in Duncan getting back into the game. I mean, he's got bored now. The damage isn't being pushed through as hard. Duncan played the trap last turn, so Mysterious will be, be even doubting whether this damage can connect to face. It could be a wandering monster, for example, or a freezing trap. It's not going to be um, it's not going to be easy for Mysterious to, to find the rest of this damage unless he gets kill command at the top of his deck. Yeah, because most people do normally play only one explosive trap, but he hasn't played any freezing at all. So that's going to give Mysterious an indication to whether he should risk it, play that Houndmaster, and just go for it anyway, or just leave him be. Hmm. 
See, he, he's, he wants to go face here. He wants to put Duncan down to one and play an explosive trap. Maybe even build his own beast, but he's a... Uh, well, if he wants to build his own beast, <laughs> don't he blame him. First he's got a charge. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure, right? That's how hunter mirrors tend to go. You want to, you want to just put them down to such low health because they just don't have healing. He's played his Death Stalker Exile, which is five, five immediate armor. He needs to then get lucky with the hero power in order to heal. So uh, yeah, I, I would have preferred that line. I, I don't want to get hung up on it though. The one that Mysterious has taken is a uh, is more more controlly sort of line, which is uh, which is what you'd expect from him, really. Yeah, I'm sure you won't lose sleep over it. I'm no, sure exactly. you'll be alright. Because I felt like you was a little bit, so I was just making sure you was alright, so. <laughs> <laughs> but no, that was a great play. Of course, that Hellmaster back, you know, you can, of course, beef up another minion by plus two, plus two. That explosive trap anyway can seal the deal. And there's not really too much Duncan can do it. Yeah, his out is to get a some sort of healing lifesteal card, hold on for a bit, and then, and then find the opportunity to heal before he attacks face when Mysterious inevitably plays the, the Explosive Trap. He can clear the board here, he can play a trap if he wants to, the, the Wandering Monster to prevent damage connecting to his face. So he can so he can survive this turn, he can he can make it through this one turn. Yeah, he's going to need to take out this Torn and with that 3-6 rush on the board it's going to be a bit of a pain because of course with Mysterious now he can play anything he wants from his, uh, from his hero power and just charge straight through. Of course not to his face but you know he can put a lot more pressure on Duncan as we can see but let's see if I can find anything he can do not too much if he wanted he could have uh, used the Hellmaster that turn as well he could have buffed his 4-4 his in a way that he traded <laughs> with the well with this so I guess he's done it in the end he was just tracking first to see if he could find something better I guess but I suppose you knew that in this kind of lineup because you've you played it before <laughs> and you beat him <laughs> It's interesting though because there's still time. There's still plenty of time for Duncan. Mysterious has, he's got the trap that will kill Duncan, but Duncan has no obligation to play into that. He can wait as long as he want, wants, and he can try and find that card there, Vicious Scalehide, when it's his turn to use the hero power. So there's uh, there's options, there's potential that Duncan can still claw his way out of this one. Yeah, you're right, dude. The only way he is going to get any health back is through any minions he can get. Of course, that scale tide will be perfectly fine. He can maybe put that down with something else to at least get something back. But it depends what he can get with the other minion he combines it with, depending on the attack, just to help him out a bit more. Well, yeah, but uh, this is this is Mysterious's turn to build a beast. So unfortunately, it won't be happy. He's just deciding <laughs> what he wants to to bust the board wide open and sort of put as much pressure on so that Duncan feels obligated to attack into the traps and and uh, well die because that's what will happen it'll just die and with a clear board like that it is tempting but you know with Duncan this is why he's very very consistent he predicts everything he's uh, not, <laughs> not a mind reader but he always like he's one of those players who kind of predicts everything tries to know the outcome of every kind of small and big situation no matter what kind of scenario he's in and too right though because he's the sort of guy you know he won't be going for that explosive trap he'll know that he's going to have that in hands being played yeah, he's still waiting. He's still trying to find the out, and, and I respect that. It's just, it's just uh, something that's not coming as quickly for him. He'd have loved, he'd have absolutely loved to have been given the uh, the choices that Mysterious was given last turn. Just the same wasn't the opposite way around of this <laughs> picture, really. It was uh, a bit of a pain. Mysterious is just like, you want HP? No, it's fine. I've got it. I've got plenty. He's still it's missing. He's still missing on the beasts. He needs either damage that's direct, so he can get, for example, um, the Life Drinker. Oh, there's another lifestyle option. <laughs> Serious. Oh, there we go. One damage to the hero. Perfect. And just like that, straight away, Mysterious with that 1 0 lead. A little bit prolonged than we expected. We thought it was going to take, it could be a little bit quicker. But in all fairness, you know, there was nothing too much Duncan could have done. And maybe if he had a scale, scale of his own or anything like that, so at least try and get some kind of health back. But it just wasn't to be in the end. Sadly for him, Mysterious was just nicking him all, really. Yeah, he got, he got the better start. He got uh, board control quite quickly, pushed the damage. He had the opportunity to potentially push damage earlier, set up a lethal that sort of stopped Duncan's out or, or limited them. But it's fine. He's a control player, and he understood that there's another line you can take. You can control the board, win the game that way, and that's what he did. He, he pretty much closed it out. And closed it out, he did. He did fight to the very end, but sadly for him, it just wasn't to be. There's too many options for Mysterious to make that comeback and well not make the comeback but just to finish <laughs> off the job you could say and with Mysterious lineups left so he's got that token druid and the odd rogue and for him now it depends what Duncan should play how do you think he should do in terms of that token druid and odd rogue what's the best matchup for him he feels like he should risk with so the matchups are, are so so finely balanced that 
that I think Mysterious will just be playing a deck that he wants to play in the moment uh, and he fancies playing. I think he's probably aware that his Rogue is less favoured than the rest of his decks, so he might just be holding off on that because when you're on stage, you want to get the win, you want to go <laughs> go in hard, but he's actually <laughs> hilariously queued up the, the matchup that is favoured for his Rogue. So he's, uh, he's pulled a blinder there as Mysterious. Yeah, and one thing to take into account as well, with Duncan, if he does keep that Spellstone as well for that Fledgling, that would be very handy. Of course, the Hellfire as well. And he's got a, he's got a quite a, a nice opening, really. And with that Cold Blood, if he has anything with a one mana drop, which is pretty decent, then he can combine that straight away and just, you know, do the Acon and straight off the bat. But look, at least he keeps a Fug, though. Obviously, Fug, in any match at Odd you keep that straight away. It's one of those go-to cards you go to off the bat. Oh. And now with Duncan, we have to see how he's going to take out. But like I mentioned before, does have plenty of options there, but decides to trade them all in. But one thing to take into account, he does have that Hellfire for later. He has the Hellfire for later. He had the Spellstone as an option, and I guess his thinking was was that he didn't have a nice way to activate the Spellstone because he didn't have the Vulgar Homunculus in hand. If it had had that, he might have kept the Spellstone because, as you said, they always keep Thug. Thug is the card that the rogues go for. So he'll be planning, or he would have been trying to work out a way that he can activate his Spellstone to five damage, kill the Thug immediately. As it stands, Things are trickier now. He has to find potentially a way that he can play his play his Volga Homunculus onto an empty board, hope that then next turn when Mysterious plays the Thug and attacks with it, he can sort of trade it in Hellfire. It's not it's not nice. It's not it's not clean, but it's uh, a way that he can potentially claw himself. Oh, speaking of death, <laughs> claw himself away from this this sort of <laughs> awkward awkward situation he's in. As it stands now, though, this is perfect for him. Yeah, of course he can. Um Get that Volga now straight away, at least it'll keep him at bay for a bit. He's got that Twilight Drake for later, and if he does get a Sun Fury Protector in, in his next card draws, you know, you can combine that as well. He's got a lot of options here. But with that Fug, of course, he can take that out straight away if need be. Yeah, it'd have been interesting there to see Mysterious sort of uh, think a bit more. So he had the opportunity to play the Vicious Fledgling, and I think there are some worlds, for example, where you want to play the Fledgling first because you don't really want to attack with your dagger into the 2-2. In fact, he attacked on turn 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 two as well when he daggered up. What the way it could have gone, for example, is he could have had the dagger held, could have played the fledgling, which wasn't immediately dealt with because obviously a two four was on board. Then next turn he could have gone deadly poison, play the thug, play the thug, kill the two four fully, buff it up to a four four. So there was like a a little bit of potential sort of thought or potential optimization that could have occurred there. But uh, it's one thing I think Mr. Uh, Duncan's probably quite happy with. Is sometimes a lot of people do lose with that Squire and Cold Blood combo straight off the bat. And it's, um, yeah. It can be a real pain, but comes a little bit late. But if we can see what Duncan's got at the moment, does have that Mossy Horror in case things get a little bit out of hand. But with Odd Rogue, it should be perfectly fine. And he still has that Hellfire. He's got two Defiles now. And if he does get that Sun Fury, like I mentioned before, with that Twilight Drake for later, then he can some good things. But a Blood Knight's not too bad. Blood Knight's not too bad, but it does it does take away the, the, the Divine Shield from your own minion, which leaves you open to Defile Clears. You can see that Duncan's probably got a couple of those coming. <laughs> I like that he's got, because he's got so much health, and because the early game hasn't gone perfectly for Mysterious, who uh, who may have faltered there, uh, I don't know, <laughs> then then Duncan's had this opportunity to play the Drake at high health total. We can now trade it in and, and start to regain the board uh, a little bit better than he could have before. Just one like about Mysterious at the moment is just going, well, kind of what we expected from Mod Rogue, you know. If they're not being aggressive, they're doing something wrong. But as you can see from there, it, that Hellfire, not really too much of an option apart from get rid of that Divine Shield and then trade it with the Twilight Drake. We'll take out the Middle Fungal Mancer anyway. But he does have options to get his health back, and the gold down's not going to be till much, much later anyway. So he has a few options, but he can very easily get rid of him quite quickly. We'll just have to see how he's going to try and go about this. His problem is that nothing's perfect here. So he wants to, in an ideal world, he wants to sort of trade and Hellfire and Defile, or, or maybe he wants to trade his Drake in because it's a four. If it was a four eight, he could trade it in Defile, and then it'd be a full clear. So he's sort of stuck in this in this weird spot where the Defile doesn't line up perfectly, where what he wants to do isn't ideal. So he's going to have to sort of take this compromise where the three or one will survive on the board afterwards. Yeah, and of course he's got that deadly poison now. He still has that cold blood as well. He's got a lot of options here. He's got two actually of those yeah. um, poisons. So nice little six-two. Lots of damage coming in here. Yeah, he's going to be loving it in a minute. Well, okay, maybe Duncan won't. <laughs> he know well. He knows that Duncan plays. He knows that Duncan plays acidic swamp who's in his deck. Mm. So he'll be aware that that's a possibility. What he's working out and what what we can see is is that if he 
plays the dagger, the deadly, the deadly, and the cold blood, he pushes so much damage that Duncan can't really deal with it all efficiently in the same turn. Um, he's not done that. He's sort of taken a middle ground, which I quite like, where you play the fledgling too, which pushes less damage in the immediate, but forces a different kind of response from Duncan that also is, uh, <laughs> is, is going to be something that, that he has to do. It's just, it's just something he has to do. That's right, and that Defile, it, it can't do too much, but at least it will take on that 7-1. He can play the Hellfire. And the problem is he can assume that Leroy and that and that weapon is he just clear him out and have lethal. It doesn't have that as of yet, it's still a little bit far from that. But then again, you don't know what Mysterious is gonna top deck at that stage. Yeah, his his out here is to play the Hellfire, I believe, and not tap. Because, well, from our cast of vision, our sort of biased seat where we can see everything that's happening, what he's probably doing is looking for outs and he's saying, all oh, right, so he needs to just not have the Leroy and the double deadly or, or or a deadly and an SI. There's so many combinations of cards, but instead he has it. It's GG. Yeah. That one bit you said about not life tapping, he probably shouldn't. Well, I think, <laughs> yeah, I think it's the right play. I think, I think looking for cards to help get you out of the situation you're in is the right thing to do. True, true. Yeah. I, th I think if he doesn't tap, he just goes to one health and then what? Dies, dies later. This is it, because I think what happened was one of, one of those deadly poisons he had, he had it for quite a long time, and that's the thing, you never know what he could have had. He could have had a Leroy, he could have had anything at that point. And for him, it was a very hard decision to make. So yeah, you're probably right, was trying to look for that one opening. But speak of openings, when he got one deck left for Mysterious, this could be a quick series. It feels like it, doesn't I know. it? The one that was, was the weird. most balanced, that we walked into this one and we were like, oh, it's 50-50s, it's quite even. We're saying 3-2, could go either way. You said 50-50, I was like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah sure. <laughs> what you said. <laughs> and then and then Mysterious has come along and he, to be fair, he's, he's, he's got some of the good matchups, you know, by uh, potential sort of chance with the key order, but he's played his games well and he's, he's, he's sought damage and he's, he's understood that he can win quickly with his aggro decks. So some consistent play, I think, there, which uh, is exactly what we expect from Mysterious when it comes to the Prem. No surprises at all. This is a man who's made it to every single final without fail. Three thirds in a second, and of course, he's going to be looking for at least another top three spot. But you get a bit bored of top three after a while, don't you? Really fancy a first Oh, here there, yeah, so. I'm so bored of finishing top three <laughs> oh. <laughs> all the time. Right? And that's why you're here with me. <laughs> <laughs> but even now, though, with this, uh, this token Druid, you have to see how things go here. But it's going to be quite an interesting, sorry, quite interesting one to see how things will go from the start for Duncan. He's obviously. Backs against the wall here, needs to try and get this reverse sweep going. Yeah, you fancy Duncan to be favoured in this matchup. He, his deck runs so many proactive threats that the Druid struggles to deal with due to it not running Naturalize and Spellstone being its only sort of really powerful removal for single targets. It runs Defile, which actually clears a big board of, of just junk that the token Druid plays. So he's got he's got the favoured matchup, obviously. He, he knew what Mysterious was going to play. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> it clearly shows that he doesn't want to just go down 3-0. And he wants to try and win as many games, draw it out as long as possible. Which I respect. Just doesn't want to have a quick series, really. To be fair, our first one was like two and a half hours, so yeah, that was quite a long one. Yeah. And uh, in that retrospect now, it could be the complete opposite, depending on how Duncan's going to do here. We'll put that first Volker down anyway. And good thing for Mysterious, even though he has that coin, at least he hasn't got a wild growth to coin Norris later on anyway, which is nice. But we'll probably see him do that next turn. Yeah, he's still going to he's still going to ramp, and he's still going to get to the Death Knight quite quickly, which is a very powerful card. And, and because of the nature of the Evenlock, He's tapping himself down to such low sort of health early that if you have the Death Knight yourself and they're not taunting, or if you have the Death Knight and at least a Spellstone for removal, you can find yourself you can find yourself sort of really threatening lethal just accidentally as the Druid quite quickly. Yeah, he's going to notice that as well. He's not going to be looking for those Reaver seven sevens at 15 HP because we know what's going to happen if it's token Druid. It's going to be a sad day for Duncan. But of course, like you mentioned before, he's going to ramp and make sure he gets the highest man as possible. He's got a stone to at least upgrade him for later. But he's got a nice little lineup, so he's got that Malfurion to put down just to um, yeah. get a couple of 1-5s on the board with the weapon on, on top of it. Or even Poison, but even then Poison will probably be a little bit pointless, but it depends exactly what he wants to do with the branching and, of course, the plague for later. Yeah, so, so he's got options. I mean, this turn is definitely a Death Knight turn. It's one of the most... It's Do you have the Death Knight on 7? Yes, cool, play it. It's, it's very, very simple like that. So he'll just be thinking about the next turns, as you said. So what is he going to do with the pass and the and the, and the the spreading plague and the spell stone moving forward? Oh, he's mous mousing over all of the other cards. Oh. <laughs> yeah, he literally had so many uh, ideas and he's just like, you know, I'll just play, you know, I'll keep it Did simple, I? which is fair enough though, you know. 
Okay, so well, what he did is he thought about what he wanted to do next turn and said to himself, look, do you know what? I fancy playing this double strong scale sh sh scavenger, pushing as much damage as I can early and just getting in. i got to respect that. But uh, it takes guts to say that your board isn't going to get cleared significantly, especially when it's just one fives and you've left the four ten and two four up. That's quite true. And to be fair, with even lock, you don't really see a full board of minions anyway. So using a plague vein when there's three up was, I think it was a good choice. I, I completely understand why Mysterious would use that up because, in all fairness, he didn't really have too many other options anyway. We'll just have to see when he plays that Malfurion, and of course, he'll be saving the branching for maybe gets um, Whisper the Woods or anything like that. So he's always got Soul of the Forest to help him out a little bit when that happens. Yeah, he, de he definitely does. Uh, this is the turn where Mysterious is probably going to enact his game plan, which which I'm hypothesizing is to play both of these strong scale sh scavengers. Um, with the pickup of a swipe with, with, with the soul of the forest though, he might he might decide that he wants to go half. He might he might want to play one of his fours and, and hold the other strong scale sh scavenger back. What a terrible name for a card. Yeah, it's not really my cup of tea in all fairness. It's, <laughs> it's on the tip S's. of your tongue. <laughs> too many S's. <laughs> no, that's true, but you're right, he does put him down anyway. Perfect time really for it in all fairness. And it's like I mentioned before, normally when you use Plague, especially against an even lock, they don't put too many minions down anyway. So, you know, for a Plague for three minions, you know, I'll tell you that. Not the most cost-effective thing, but it's one of those lineups with an even lock where you probably won't get too much better. So He's created a couple of 5-9 taunts. They're pretty big. Uh, how's yeah. Duncan going to cope with those? He might not. Could be, <laughs> we could be looking at uh, quite a quick... Yeah, we quite could, a quick yeah. killing of Duncan if, if it goes like this way. And credit to Mysterious where he saw the lines, he saw what he wanted to do. He anticipated Duncan not being able to deal with the one fives as well as, as potentially, or, or, or even just ignoring the one fives because he didn't expect Mysterious to have the, the strong shell scavenger in his hand by then. And, and got it right, mate. Yeah, got it right. <laughs> got to take your time on these things. <laughs> and he got there, but uh, now he's cleared the board. What now? This is it, and he hasn't really got too much going afterwards. So, play is completely useless at this point. Branching is going to save for later. Swipe again, you know. Can use it if you put something else, but might be a little bit of a waste. You might want to save it for later on. It's got a Malfurion down. He obviously can put that down to get a couple one fives up to keep him at bay. I assume he will use that UI later on as well, just get a bit of card draw, and hopefully enough he won't over draw straight afterwards just due to the fact that he can put one or two of those timers down if he uh, draws them pretty much. Definitely, and this is what I was saying earlier as well. So Duncan's at 13 health, and a hero power from the Death Knight, assuming Mysterious plays it now, We'll put him down to 10. Suddenly, Duncan's looking at just being dead almost every turn, and, and it changes how he has to play. It just makes things trickier for him in every sort of way. So so it, it's interesting. I, I think Mysterious took a line that, that was that was definitely good for the immediate turns, but it might have impacted his long-term game plan in a, in a negative way. That's right, and if you see what I see as well with Duncan, he does have that mossy horror, so... Either way, if he plays those spiders or those one fives, it's going to be uh, curtains for him anyway, no matter what. Yeah, and Mysterious has actually decided not even to, to put him down to 13, he's decided, or to 10. He's decided to to take the hit and, and to kill the Drake. That's that's interesting. It means that he's playing in a very controlling way. He thinks that he can he can take his time, he can UI, then he can Whispering Woods potentially after the UI, or, or Plague when things get bad. and and go from there towards uh, winning the game sort of after that uh, with, with uh, a big burst turn. I'm not sure if it'll play out that well for him, though. That's right. I do like that play, though, because Mossy Hoi is going to save in case uh, it does get a lot of plague on the board, which is perfectly understandable. And he's just a spell, so just to keep his health up a little bit in case it's one of those things where you don't know what it's like with Token Druid at times. But that's the main thing, though. At least he's got his first giant on the board. and. That's the one thing we've noticed from Duncan is the fact that with his even lock, we haven't seen too many of those big minions like the Reavers or those Giants, or we've only seen one Drake out over the last, uh, for, uh, last 13, 14 turns. It's been quite mad. Yeah, uh, and now this is where it gets really real all of a sudden because Mysterious has his UI'd face, but he's not really threatening enough, uh, enough damage after this UI. It's possible that, that well, with the pickup of the two Arcane Tyrants, it's less possible. But I was going to say it's possible that he could have used the, the Bone Mare there to, to just taunt up the, the Giant and go face. I think it's more likely now that he probably spell stones and drakes and maybe takes a trade and continues to consolidate his board presence because he knows he's got the clears for when Whispering Woods and when Whispering Woods and, and Soul of the Forest come out where he can just defile and clear it. Yeah, that's the one annoying thing about Evenlock as well because I've played this matchup quite a lot and 
in this kind of circumstances, yeah, that the files and all those bits and pieces can be a little bit of a pain as well, especially, for example, I don't know if you just pointed out, it's the fact that, like, when you do yourself whisper in the woods and you do get the uh, soul and forest straight afterwards, you can just take out one of the, um, one of the minions just to keep it going, just take out the whole board yeah. just like that, and it's... Um, yeah, it's a little bit of a pain, so we're going to have to see how exactly he's going to go about this, whether he's going to try it anyway, just so that he at least gets rid of one of them. He knows one of the Hellfires is missing, but it's those Defiles who can clear that entire board when he does that, and it's a lot of resources, and it's his win condition as well, or one of them. Yeah, yeah. Mysterious uh, will be trying to think now, how, how can I win this game? How, what can I play, what can I do that, that gives me a board position that I can like, abuse the power of Savage Draw, or I can use my branching paths to, to actually kill him? As the game goes on, Duncan's going to tap. He's going to, well, he's going to he's going to find more resources and more big threats, and, and it could get out of hand for Mysterious very rapidly if he doesn't find a way to to either push for lethal himself and and have Duncan on the back foot, having to respond defensively, or or find his own sort of way to defend against this, which isn't easy when you've used one spellstone. Yeah, this is the other problem with Token Druid as well. Is that there's not really too many outs in terms of like the situation he's in. Like right now, he could attempt it, but. Another thing to take into account is the fact that that giant is still going to be on the board. It's very, very hard. And when it, the Evil Knot gets into this kind of state, it's very difficult to, for Token Druid to kind of come out of it. Maybe if it's a little bit earlier on, then fair enough, it might have been okay. But now that giant's on the board, and possibly that Drake next turn as well, it's going to be very, very tough. Yeah, Duncan will be looking towards Bone Mare as well, because Bone Mare, as we saw in the first game, do you, remember, do you remember 16 years ago when we cast the first series of the day? Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, I don't see. It was so far away now. I can't even remember the that. bone, the lovely <laughs> bone mare that set up lethal. Here, though, as you said earlier, he's going to bump off one of the one ones, defile, and and really get quite a nice full board clear here. That the mysterious should be expecting. He, he shouldn't. He shouldn't be surprised at this. Yeah, it's it's way way too long in the game now. Like, if he doesn't expect him to have at least like one defile at this stage and trade one of them just so that he can get rid of the whole board, then you know what? But this is what I'm talking about. It's the fact that. He has no choice at this stage, but even if he does it again, puts another Wisping Woods down, et cetera, et cetera, you know, it's got another Defile again. He's got his Hellfire still. He's, he's got all the bits of the puzzle, and he's got that Ghoul Dan now. <laughs> and Bossy Horror. Further. He's and got it all. Yeah, he's got it all. Yeah, he's, he's loving life right now. He's, he's enjoying got, himself. So. He's got the answers. He knows what to do. He just needs to make sure he doesn't lose concentration. You know, He needs to make sure that he doesn't put himself in a position where Mysterious just sneaks lethal with the hero power, with the swipe, or, or something a bit sort of absurd that he didn't really think about. And he just needs to consolidate the board and win. That's where, <laughs> basically, Hearthstone, in a, in a nutshell, win the board, win the game. Get as wild as possible, but I think Duncan's got a nice little perfect answer for that. I Lovely. Think, I think he is just like just double checking, making sure he is making the right moves, because you can very easily make mistakes like this, and um, I've seen it happen before, and they just quit because they just get so annoyed about it. <laughs> <laughs> because it's a very, very easy move to make, but if you don't do it properly, then it's one of those things, you know. Even with Mechafoon before, like, uh, <laughs> I remember where... I didn't play Mechafoon first and played the two spells afterwards. Oh, and then no. I actually, I literally clearly won it and then I lost anyway just because I didn't play Mechafoon first and I just looked to myself and I was just like, what am I doing? Yeah, I'd love to see that. <laughs> like, mysterious, no, just to, <laughs> mysterious just to make a mistake and go, you know what, I'm done with this and just walk off the stage. <laughs> it's not his style. He's, he'll fight to the bitter end. So yeah. even now, he's, he's still thinking, he's still trying to work out how he can win this game. It's, it's probably why he does so well in the Premiership. He doesn't get tilted, he doesn't get upset. He just keeps going, he keeps working out, calculating what he's doing, working out how he can win. This is it. He's got a very strong mentality and his research is on par. But even though he thinks he's in a good spot in terms of what he's got, that mossy horror. Bad just news. staring in his eyes. Oh, yes, it's not going to be looking too good for him at this stage. You're smiling. You're loving it. You're like, mossy horror. He's going to kill him. <laughs> I've been waiting for it for a while. I was just like saying earlier, you know, if he's got enough minions on the board and then Plague, then that's fair enough. But I don't, that's the good thing about Mossy Horror is the fact that it gives the Evenock room to play numerous minions. So if he does do that, then that's fair enough. And maybe, you know, there's a couple of things he could have done. Maybe he could have used branching to make it all 3-5 to, you know, avoid that. But maybe he wants to save that instead. Yeah, no, that was a, that's actually quite a nice, neat idea that he could have used the branching pass there on the old, <laughs> on, the, on the spreading plague and, and played around the Mossy Horror. Would he have played into anything? Do you think that maybe there was a, there wasn't a Hellfire clear? It would have been quite nice. That's a, an interesting line that probably should have been considered. The only thing I would take into account is that even though they would have been 3-5, he could have hellfired, traded two of his minions for the two, and then he's only got two 3-2s left standing, so... Oh, and he wouldn't have been able to swipe and kill the 2-4 and the giant, actually, as well, which, uh, that's pretty critical. So it wasn't a great idea, really, was it? But it was a nice thought. In hindsight, it's great. <laughs> when we can look at the board and say, oh, if he had four more mana, it would have been really good.
But uh, that's what Druid wants to do anyway. Well, they want to have four more mana every time. Just play all the cards. And looking at it now, he's got his Lich King. He's got that Dread Infernal to take out those Divine Shields. And even that Bone Mare as well, it's just sitting there waiting for him to be used to try and see what's going on. But it's looking pretty bleak for Mysterious here. It's, it's, it's actually a really interesting turn for Duncan because what he wants to do is he wants to play Defy. So the best play is to play the Defile and then the Dread Infernal and, and just clear your opponent's board and push face. But what he wants to do is hold the Defile because he's worried about the Whispering Woods um, Soul of the Forest reload that could come at any point. So, he, so he'll be weighing that up. He'll be, he'll be having a thought in his mind, like, how much do I care? Like, can I just play the Dread Infernal, take some trades instead of pushing damage to face, and, and go a bit slower but save my resources so that in the future they're, they're still sort of useful to me and I can answer the one way that I probably lose the game. And that's what he's done. Yeah, it's a shame really because even with one minion on the board and if Duncan had no taunts, he could have won that with the two savage draws and a hero power as well, as well as hitting that minion. But Duncan's taking every single precaution because with Token Druid, even with one minion, you know, he's got those two savage draws and he would have had that hero power as well, can easily take him out. But Duncan knows exactly what's going on. But right now, Mysterious is just absolutely running out of ideas here. He, he's, he certainly is. It hasn't gone well for him. The game plan that he enacted didn't work, which I, I, I understand. Right? He, he wanted to make some big taunts and just and just get the damage in quickly. It didn't quite work out for him. That's fair enough. You know, Sometimes you play to your odds and, and sometimes they have it. And to his credit, he's, he's kept with the game and he's he almost got there. It was very close. Duncan's at 12. It's not, it's not like it's been an entire whitewash. And he's, and he's taunted up a couple of times as well. So not too far off. No, not too far off at all, and yeah, he had to play that UI because it doesn't really matter about how much card draw he gets now. He just needs to try and find additional options. He, of course, in this kind of matchup, Token Druid's fatigue first every time, depending on how much uh, Duncan knife taps in that kind of scenario. But he's just got way too many options. Look, he's got his Gul'dan to get his taunts back. He's got the Lichkin as well to add more viable options. He's got the Silence as well if things get a bit out of hand, but that Silence probably won't play too much anyway. The beetle for the armor, and he's got that bone mare just as part of his win condition now. It's just a matter of time, really, I think. Well, what he might want to do is he might want to see if about, uh, well, can he die, for example, if he just bone mares the 2 3 and puts everything towards the face? Can he die? Because he sets up lethal. So that would have been something he thought about. Instead, he's saying, look, I'm just going to play it safe. I'm just going to play everything I can. Clear the board again, because every turn it's just, you just clear the board and, and eventually win. He's, he's even picked up another AoE for, for if Mysterious tries to go wide yet again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's already used one Defile, one Hellfire. He's still got both of them in his hand now. And of course, with that free to all, it's um, almost, I would say, a nail in the coffin here. But we'll have to see how things play out. He's got This is the only problem you see with Token Druid is the fact that you can have the options, but if you don't get the opportunity to play with him because he's very close to lethal here, it's, um, it's very, very hard. Yeah, I, I expect Mysterious to taunt up and, and avoid dying to just Bone Mare. But... You never know, he could just do something crazy. He could, he could he could be weighing up how likely it is that Duncan has the Bone Mare, because the Bone Mare is the only thing that kills him, or a Death Knight card. And he could be thinking about going uh, Whispering Woods, Soul of the Forest. And in fact, I think even if he, if he does that, and if he hero powers for armor as well, he doesn't actually die. So that could be an out that he's considering in his mind, where he doesn't end up taunting, but what he does do is he puts a board down that with the double Savage Raw the turn after and the branching paths can be used to well, not just clear the board, but kill his opponent too. So, it's, so that's an option. One thing that makes me laugh as well is that Mysterious is like, you, I think you mentioned it before, is that he's quite a quick player, but when he's in the spot above her, ropes it. Takes his time. <laughs> yeah, exactly, which is, uh, to be fair, each to their own, really. I think patience is the most key, but we're going to see what he's going to find out in a minute, but yeah, it wasn't necessary at all. He needed to armor up there, I'm afraid, to survive that turn. And as a result, he's dead. Dead to Bone Mare. It's just a matter of time, really, but it looks like Duncan will take his first game. He could still have a reverse sweep here. Of course, Mysterious will be playing to, uh, Token Druid throughout the rest of his match now. So that's one for Duncan, you know, slowly getting that reverse sweep back. 2-1 now in favour of Mysterious. And Duncan's got a hard road ahead, but definitely not impossible. Definitely not impossible. Um, I don't know if he knows that, that uh, he's taking a long time to do it, but... <laughs> 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 he's realizes a bit. Yeah, <laughs> did he react to that? <laughs> uh, I don't know. It's like he knows, you can just sense when I... <laughs> he senses when you're saying something. <laughs> he senses when I'm talking about him. He's like, Nick's just, Nick's just said something about me. Yeah, what is that thing? It's like if someone says something about you, sneeze or something like that. Is that right? No. No? 
I, I mean, have I just made up medically? On the spot? Medically, not right. <laughs> <laughs> It might be something I've watched, and it might actually been completely false. You know what? It's you know what? a matter of fact. Now I like it. Let's let's just believe in ghosts and, and sneezing when people <laughs> do talk about. It. I'll go back <laughs> after after the cast. I'll go I'll go back to the, the players area. I'll just I'll just talk about you. And if you start sneezing, let me know. Oh, to be fair, actually, Jack had a bad cold uh, yesterday. So Did he? yeah, it's probably yeah, well, why. Yeah, uh, always talking about him, aren't they? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's probably why he was sneezing left, right, and centre. But <laughs> enough for the sneezing. Yeah. Back into the game now, of course. And you see Mysterious will be continuing on with that token Druid and Duncan with that odd rogue. Yeah, and Duncan's got what looks like to be uh, quite a good start. You can go Firefly into Firefly Cold Blood into Vicious Fledgling if you, if you sort of want to keep all three of those cards on the right. You don't want to keep Baku the Moon Eater. You, want, you, you literally never want to see that card. So he, he, he has what is a very good opportunity to just be so aggressive early that Mysterious can't handle it. Because he's not playing Wrath in his deck. He's not playing, he's not playing Naturalize. He's, he's not playing MC Tech. Mysterious' only answer to sort of this early aggression is Spellstone. And, well, we can see as casters that he doesn't have that. So it's going to be good for Duncan, I think, unless... Unless he top cards. Unless he top decks it. it. <laughs> oh. <laughs> but no, this is one of the problems with this as well as the fact that I've seen it enough times with Token Druid where when you play against an odd rogue and when they have that Squire or Firefly or anything like that and you've got Cold Blood on top of it, well, it's that fledgling. There's so many different ways you can just end the game so quickly. And even with that chain gang, I'm not too sure how long it can hold it back, but it can hold it back enough because it's got the uh, giggling inventor anyway on top of it. Well, what he might do here is he might just coin out the fledgling because Mysterious is committed to hero powering down the 1-1. So he knows that Mysterious doesn't really have much going on. He, he, doesn't, have, he doesn't have a handful of like ramp or, or sort of good cards. So he's gone for the fledgling because he knows there's, there's no answers in the deck. He knows that if the fledgling hits face and, and gets Wind Fury and then gets like a cold blood buff, it, things get out of hand ridiculously quickly. It's just going to be loving it. Really, yeah, isn't he, it? he's going to play his one drops here in a cold blood and he's going he's gonna to push. He's going to really push and Mysterious is going to be under the cosh here. And he's got two deadly poisons on top of that as well. So we'll have to see exactly what he gets from this fledgling. I'm quite curious to see if he gets a Wind Fury or maybe even Stealth. Oh, stealth would be good. Divine Shield's quite good as well because it means that uh, that the spell stone, if it eventually does come, can't be used. I sort of like health more because the druid still can't use a, a maximum health stone. So, so health actually probably better if you consider their turn four being a being a Saranite chain gang. It probably trades better. It leaves you with one health overall more. So he'll be weighing it up. I think, I think he goes health and then they go. Yeah, that makes more sense in that kind of way. Even if it's, of, course, of course, with those chain gangs, it's not going to make too much difference anyway. But with those two deadly poisons as well, it's so close to his win condition already. We'll just have to see how he can execute it and if he can actually get it out at all. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to think of cards that, that Duncan can get next turn if Mysterious plays the Saranite chain gang that mean that he can connect with, uh, with the Vicious Fledgling to face. And I think it's only South Sea Deckhand or, or, or Cold Blood. So if he gets a Cold Blood or a second Cold Blood or a South Sea Deckhand, he can sort of take some, well, are effectively sort of inefficient trades, but just connect face with the fledgling, which is a, which is a <laughs> something that you just don't really do. fancy it. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> you, you, it got banned from arena. That's how much people like connecting with the with the fledgling to face. That doesn't surprise me in the slightest. Not surprised at all. But speaking of squires from earlier, that that does come down. Doesn't make too much difference. Maybe get a wider board, which is, of course, what you'd love as an odd rogue. But yeah, have to see how he can actually go through with this now. It's a bit of a pain moving into a turn where where you can't connect with the fledgling to face. He, he won't be happy about that. But I don't know if he'll necessarily mind because he can spread wide. He knows that the this is a turn where Mysterious only has five mana. He's not going to be able to play a Spreading Plague on him. He can then trade his 1-3, one, one, his, his, little, his little stuff away next turn, push through any taunts that get played, or potentially it could be that there's a ramp and, and two 4-4s four that get played. And... And then eventually sort of just get there with the fledgling, the, the <laughs> one card to win the game. Sweet. That's happened to me Sweet. a few times, and it's just not good, mate. It's just not good at all. And like I mentioned earlier as well, that Squire, a little bit late, but the main thing is it gives him a wider board. If he does put that Giggling Inventor down, it's sometimes good to at least use those small minions to get rid of that Divine Shield from the Giggling Inventor anyway, and give that opportunity to Duncan again to get that fledgling out into face. Well, here especially. Mysterious is, is thinking, he's thinking, right, the best play for me to not die to this fledgling is to play the taunt. He's had some cards, well, he's, he's, he's got two cards in hand. What are the odds of him having Blood Knight, which is an absolute huge punish if he plays the Giggling, or or him having Fungal Mancer, which obviously 
can come out on turn five. It's not, it's not hugely unlikely. It happens a lot. So he'll be worried about the potential that the Giggling can just lose him the game if he plays it. What he's done, I like this, is he's, he's drawing some cards. He's looking for answers. The answer he's looking for is obviously spreading plague. And he's going to play two four fours and hope that that's good enough to, to get him through to the end of the game. And that's the thing as well. At least afterwards he can change with a fledgling. But even then, if that has well, it's so close to <laughs> this is it. Yeah. <laughs> so so wind fury here is lethal if he just gets it straight away. I, I assume you just go for it. You just you just you just take your chances. Oh, it's not there. Oh. Have you seen Mysterious literally praying, thinking, please don't get wind fury? But when you see someone take at least two or three seconds to decide what to get that fleshling, you kind of know from then it's like, yeah, it's fine, we're cool. Oh, well, yeah, if it's Duncan, you know it's fine. If it's someone who's known for their BM, you know, you know you've <laughs> lost. They take the two seconds, they do a little fist pump in the air and they all start dabbing. Oh, and no, no, no. We, we spoke about that too much today, <laughs> yeah. I think. Yeah, we, pretty much. But one thing to take into account, though, of course, he does have that stealth anyway, so wasn't the worst of the worst. Mm. But yeah, it would have been nice to get Win few to have the lethal anyway. Well, what he might do here, which could be quite, a, quite an interesting play, is he might just sacrifice his 1-3 and his 1-2, push the 1-1 to face, and then he plays around Spreading Plague. <laughs> it's super weird though. It's a weird play where you don't I need to do that. I think that's a great that. play to be fair. And and if you if you if you if you just if you just don't do that, if you just ignore the four fours, the spreading plague doesn't particularly help too much. And and if there's a, a giggling, for example, you can actually just get through it and win anyway by keeping your minions alive because obviously you get deadly poison, vile spine, couple of trades, bang, vicious bludgeon connects. I think what you said there was a very good option because even though it gets rid of two of his low-cost minions, even if you did put a plague down anyway, it's only 1-5, it's not cost-effective at all. So that would have been a very good viable option, but because that's the thing, that's the only thing that's going to hold Duncan back right now at this stage. Yeah, uh, yeah. I, 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 the more I think about it, I, I sort of like sacrificing a single 1-2, and then the plague comes down, he then sort of trades his 4-4s four into stuff, and then you just go deadly poison, vile spy, and you, you kill the 1-5, and suddenly you're good. As it stands, he can now play he can now play Spreading Plague or Giggling. I think Spreading Plague is just better at the moment. And and he'll have two 1-5s, which are harder for Duncan to get through, I think. Although, maybe he still does. If he has the Deadly Poison on the weapon, that's four damage for a 1-5, and then there's a 1-1 one one that trades, there's a Vile Spine that kills the other one. You know, I think it was lethal either way. Yeah, I think so at that point. It's just, it was just a matter of time, really, wasn't it, until... <laughs> even thought about that in that case. But that that's what we spoke about before, even with that plague anyway, like it would have helped a little bit, but of course with Odd Vogue, <laughs> having Morsi, Morsi Horror that would be a little bit OP, but Duncan does take that. And again, Mysterious still having trouble with that token Druid just to try and end things out here. I really like this, by the way. You, you've got it back to 2-2 two, two, and you're like, right, I'm going to take a break. I'm going to go to the loop. Let that's, him sweat. That's so Raphael Nadal. <laughs> that's what it is. That's what Nadal does. When he's, when he's, when he's been losing and he's getting back into the game, he starts bouncing the ball and taking his time and really, you know, slowing his opponent down. And that's what Duncan's done. Or maybe Duncan actually played Odd Rogue there just so that he can actually nip off quickly. <laughs> he's Wouldn't it surprise me the slightest? He's so getting like, in Come on, head. stop taking your time, mate. Don't play a play. Just let me play on. Completely makes no sense at all. But let's talk about it, though. So, two at the moment. It does still have his token Druid, but it still has that Hunter as well. So, it's going to be quite a difficult one to sit in the circumstances. Was it Secret Hunter? It's Secret it Hunter, So, yeah. it does have that explosive trap to deal with. Uh, some of the Whispering Woods here and there, but we'll have to see how things go. That, with that game as well, it's like, I only needed a little bit more time. If I had a little bit more health as well, we could have taken that because that thing's prone on the odd rogue. Mm. does die down a little bit. So how do you think things are going to go in this matchup, like in terms of uh, each player's deck and their, how favoured it is? So the Hunter has the tools to deal with some of the tokens early. It has the Death, the death Knight that obviously deals two damage to everything. It has Mossy Horror in his list as well, which is pretty rad. And then he's got uh, Explosive Trap as a one-of, which when he tries to attack with his tokens, they just die and, and nothing happens. So so there are tools there. The problem is that it's a hunter deck and you don't have much draw, you're not going to be able to, to to get those things consistently every time. Doesn't have its nourish and his UI out, so. <laughs> yeah. so so it'll come down to, to to whether Duncan needs to draw those tools and hit them, or whether he sort of plays in a way or, or gets the sort of the right draw, the right mulligan that, that means that he can be very aggressive early on and just kill Mysterious. Like, like we saw last game, just kills Mysterious before he even has a chance to react. Yeah, there's numerous ways. It's very hard to say, really. It's like, even though you're right, though, the Hunter does have to tours. If Mysterious gets that, you know, that wild growth or the nourish, or even just one of them, just to have a 
a good head start, you could say, if things could go to plan. But the problem with the hunt, it's like you mentioned, gets fear of those minions out, you know, some of the animal companions and those bits and pieces. It could go either way. That's why you said right at the beginning of this series, didn't you? It's very, very 50 50. Even yeah. when Mysterious's odd pally's been banned and uh, Duncan's uh, Druid's been banned, the uh, Mali Druid, then of course it makes it a very, very even matchup. But I didn't expect a reverse sweep. I was expecting like a 3 or a 3 1, considering the circumstances, and we know what Token Druid can be like. But he hasn't really had too many options with it. He's not really been in a very good spot, you know, in that first game with the Token Druid. Of course, he's getting cleaned up quite easily, and every time he whistled the woods and sold, uh, sold the forest afterwards, he always kept having issues with those defiles every time. That time round, it was just way too quick to even have any kind of board presence to try to keep that odd rogue that bay. But now things are going to be different now. We're going to see if Duncan can continue to streak with that secret rogue and see how much of a decent card draw he gets. Because like you mentioned before, you know, Mysterious, he's going to have plenty of card draw in his hands. He can do exactly what he likes. But with Duncan, though, different story. But with a good start, we could see a very even match. And now he's in Mysterious' head. He didn't even need the loot. He just went to the toilet, sort of looked himself in the mirror, or in the face in the mirror, and went, you can do this, Duncan. You're the greatest. <laughs> Mysterious hasn't had that. That's a disadvantage. That is true. And uh, I don't know why, but I was, when I saw their notes, I was expecting, like, I don't know, stick man drawings or just, like, <laughs> weird stuff like that. Just just to pass the time a little bit. but Just drawing drawing pictures of Mysterious. Yeah, it's like, yeah, just, like, bashing his pen aim, basically, the whole time. <laughs> like, like a dartboard, basically. <laughs> So, so so he's gone first and he's actually got the options. He's got the good, the powerful start that means that he can sort of start to, to run away with this game. He can play two secrets over the next two turns with the Dire Mole as well. He's got the Deathstalker Rexar if there is an early sort of board that he can't deal with. It's looking tasty. It's looking like a nice a nice game for Duncan where, where Mysterious is now going to have to to sort of pull this out of the bag, which he can do. He's got Coin Saranite into Fluke, which will also be a Saranite, which puts down so many minions and so many stats that but there's a chance that Duncan just can't get through all that. Yeah, that's a possibility. He may have that secret keep and two secrets there, but we'll have to see how he plays on from that afterwards. But look at Mysterious, so he's got that chain gang all same way. He's got that swipe. At least he's got some kind of AOE to deal with. He's more than happy to coin it out, though. Yeah, I think he's probably going to coin out the chain gang, and then next turn he's going to play what is effectively a, a buffed chain gang. Like It's almost like pretending Keleseth exists. <laughs> instead, <laughs> instead. Oh! He's actually gone for the swipe there, so so he thinks that he has more time than, or he, he thinks he can buy more time doing it this way. Which, to be fair, it works out. I think he he's he can't see the hand, but that's worked out. But even then, that freezing trap it's not going to help too much if if Mysterious puts a chain game down and uh, uses it to his needs. Then he can also get another one straight afterwards. So it's going to be helping Mysterious more than anything. The options here for Duncan is looking pretty bleak. Yeah, and and Mysterious can even. He can be. He can. He can play the the chain gang. We know that Duncan at the moment won't have a, like have a way to deal with the chain gang super well, and then he can just play the strong cell, the strong, the scavenger. He can play the scavenger and and buff up his tour minions, and it's just going to be it's going to be a situation where Mysterious takes it slow, bounces potentially the the scavenger with with the freezing trap if Duncan does decide to play it, and then and then just buffs his minions so hard and so high that that Duncan doesn't actually have the answer available to him in his deck list. Well, that's the thing. Mysterious hasn't got a god hand, but it's very good to start with. I just feel so for Duncan in terms of his hand options. It's very, very limited to what he wants to do. And uh, I'm just so glad looking at it now. He didn't play that freezing chap because things would have changed entirely. And like you say, he's got the scales as well on top of that. He's even got the, He could even take a risk and even nourish to get two extra mana crystals here. But if he actually wants to do that, that's another story. Yeah, yeah I, I, I like, I prefer sort of just playing for board if you're mysterious. You can make some big old taunt minions here, and it, it's it's obviously not looking that great for Duncan, but let's say Mysterious doesn't go for that. Let's say he does go to Ramp with Nourish, which is sort of the the very uh, the standard thing, the, the play that you make on turn five. Then he might end up uh, giving Duncan a way back into the game. He might give him a chance. He's definitely going to need that chance, and with Duncan still... When eventually when he gets to turn six, he'll kind of stabilize a little bit more considering the circumstances. But look at that, another chain gang there as well. And on top of that for later on, it's going to be very difficult. It might even be too early for Duncan to handle considering his AoE. So of course, the AoE he's got yeah. does have it, but not going to make too much difference. Well, next turn he gets to play the strong scale, the, oh, the scavenger, the really, the, the four drop. He gets to play the scavenger. I've just stopped saying that. I've just said it's four so drop. It's so hard. <laughs> Why make cards that just have so many S's in the name? It doesn't make any sense. Should we just have a word with Blizzard and see yeah. what's going on? <laughs> you, you play the old, uh, the old, the old, <laughs> the man, the strong, the strong shell. You play the strong shell. 
you very you, strong man. So you play the really strong man. You play him. Everything gets buffed. But plus two, plus two, and then what does Duncan do? He can't. His his AOE in the form of Rexar is an AOE that doesn't actually kill big things. It's just going to kill piddly things. And and Mysterious has found a way to play this game in a, a sort of a round not playing piddly things. He hasn't had to Whispering Woods on four. He's played Saranite Knight Chain Gang instead. Yeah, it's, even though he has this now, it's not going to do too much. And maybe if he'd gotten to a little bit less health, it would have been okay. He's got his two kill commands with his beast when he launched out later on. But even then, it's not going to make too much difference. Mysterious has kind of led him on a little bit, giving him a little bit of false hope, hasn't he? Yeah, he has. Duncan won't be happy about this. He certainly won't be happy about the second one that's going to come down for lethal next turn unless sort of things change dramatically between now and then. Mysterious is just deciding whether he wants to hear a power face first. He knows there's two secrets there. If one of them's Wandering Monster, which Duncan only plays one of, it could proc that, and then it could proc the Snake Trap uh, or the or the Venom Strike Trap, which would slow him down. It would be an issue for him. Instead, he's deciding to, to straight in attack with his 5-4, kill the three drop that spawns, and then subsequently deal with the Snake Trap that activates after that using his hero power. Even now, though, like, yeah, sure, fair enough, he has his kill commands, but it's such a waste using it on both those minions straight afterwards. It's yeah, and and Duncan, and the Mysterious could just trade here. You see, you you lose nine damage, which feels like a lot, but you massively consolidate your board again. You have this 5-1 that's going to stick around now and get buffed even further by the, the next scavenger, strongman, that comes down. I honestly don't, uh, <laughs> don't know how Duncan gets out of this. He's probably looking at his hunter deck and thinking, crikey. <laughs> Crikey. Yeah, what happens? Like, you know, where's your Wisp in the Woods at? Like, <laughs> what's I just, going on? I just wanted you to play tokens, but you've played bigger things. Yeah, well, like, am I playing Taunt Druid here? Like, <laughs> at this stage. But even then, it's like, it's like I mentioned before, there's kill commands. He can use them both if he wants, but it's such, such a waste. And we'll have to see if he can find another out here one way or another. He can't play them now anyway. He's, he can only play one of them. I think he's looking for charge. I think he's looking for... so. <laughs> So one of the outs that is available to him is, is the out that's always available with Rexar. It's not particularly likely, but you can go for bloat bat plus poisonous and potentially sort of a, a rush mechanic or charge. And what that means is that you just clear their board. You, you bump it in, it dies, it deals damage to everything, and it, it, everything dies. That's probably what he's after the most here because everything else is looking sort of uh, very difficult for him to get going. Oh, that's a nice draw, isn't it? Yeah, I was gonna I was gonna mention it, but like you were going on about what you were saying, I was so <laughs> I was so interested. I literally completely forgot about that little play. But yeah, that's one of the great things there. Of course, Moses takes out one of the taunts, silence one anyway, so can't buff him anymore. But then again, if he gets his two one fives from his mouth, you him. Yeah, back to square one again. And then, and then they all just get buffed again by old strong man, and and Duncan's back at square one. Old strong man. Old strong man. <laughs> Sirius hates playing. He hates playing Death Knight on seven. It's just not. It's just. It's just not something he's keen on doing at all. It's not a big fan of it, really. He hates it, which I. I, just, I like. I like. I like uh, Death Knight on Seven. Big fan of it, personally. Big, big fan. Big he's gone for two four fours, and draw, a couple of cards, which. Uh, it's all right, isn't not it? Really, it's, it's not knowledge. that bad. <laughs> I can't complain there. It's like, it's very very rare you get a wide board without any Whispering Woods or anything like that. I just find it's quite hilarious. As well, of course you can with Plague if the uh, your opponent's got. Hell of a lot of minions on, on the board as well, but yeah, this is a weird one for me. Well, it does it better, this deck, because it plays double Saranite, it plays double Giggling, it plays Flubidinous Floop, which is another Floop. oh another fantastic card name there, that <laughs> <laughs> where Blizzard are definitely, definitely just trying to make it as hard as possible for people to pr uh, pronounce card names. And you can just create more boards. People like the list more, because you cut the Violet Teachers, and you sometimes cut Power of the Wild, and I know that Mysterious has here, for example, and then... And then your boards are a bit stronger, they're a bit thicker, and, and we've seen it work here perfectly, where if it had been a Violet Teacher, Duncan could have just kill commanded it. He could have dealt with it easily. But because it was two sort of um, minions that are both a bit sort of a bit bulkier than tokens, like two threes, it's all been a problem for him, and it's, uh, it's all gone wrong. Yeah, well, I've seen it in so many situations where this one deck will literally let them down the whole way, and I was thinking to myself, it could be another one from Mysterious, but because of the great style he had to begin with, it's not been going too bad, but he's got that branching still to, of course, buff his minis later on for that lethal attack. And does have a soul of fortune still, but it's not really too much of use at this at this stage, in all fairness. But that Mirror Fury is still sitting there, you know, still can get that two one fives out later. And 
not only to delay him, but obviously can use branching afterwards just to put more pressure on Duncan here. He's, uh, well, you say that the soul of the forest isn't necessarily bad, uh, good right now. He could probably just play any of the cards in his hand and win. I think he's in such a great spot. He, he can do what he likes what, now. What, what, like, <laughs> he can't see Duncan's hand. We can. And we know that Duncan's hand is not the best hand. <laughs> <laughs> not the best at all. I think... I think Mysterious kind of knows it as well, just due to the fact that when you play against someone like this, sometimes you don't even need to remember what cards have been used in his hand. You just kind of get that feeling where it's like, well, you know, he's having a bit of a mare here, he's had a few issues here and there, and it's just got to that point. But you know what? Using the Soul of Forest straight away is perfectly fine, but I think in a tournament situation, you do want to try and be still as cost-effective as possible, which is why I don't blame him using that Malfurion. Don't get me wrong, he could have used that Soul of the Forest, but, you know, if Duncan has a struggle like trying to take out any of his minions here, he knows he's in deep, deep trouble, you know. He's still got branching and if it top decks a savage draw or anything like that, then that's game. Well, I mean, you set up lethal. I think you can play any of the cards in your hand there and still set up lethal for next turn. It's 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 pretty insurmountable and, and Duncan recognises it. He's going for his bloat bat and his poisonous out, which is the out. It's the only way he can survive. Even if he can't play it this turn, it'd have to be next turn, unfortunately, so... He could just nourish for more mana crystals for no reason and then just go straight for face plus hero power. He could, have, he, could have, he could have not attacked, played the Death Knight. He could have done whatever he wanted. Mysterious, is, he's just so far ahead. He just had it all. And, and that's, that's fine. That's the way, it, the way it's gone. You, you were going to say the way the cookie crumbles, but you stopped yourself a little that's bit. That's Jenga. <laughs> that's going to be a new say now after you said that. But finally, he does use those two kill commands. I think he started to realise that he had to. There's literally no choice yeah. in the matter now. And that's lethal. That is, yeah, pretty much straight And again, there. you have lethal with a couple of different cards there. There's a couple of ways you can do it if you want you could to. could have done that with Swipe Hero Power as well <laughs> on top of it. Or even the scale as well. There's so much you could have done there. But yeah. after a fair amount of time, it managed to get the job done. So false hope for Duncan there, sadly. But you know what? That was a really good game. We were trying to figure out exactly if there was a way for, for Duncan to make that comeback. And he did. And we we're trying to figure out a way in which for the... Um, for that token drift to play, because it's like I mentioned before, in so many previous weeks, so many previous matches, there's so many times where that one deck has literally just let them down. But so far, that was a fantastic series to go out. You know, Duncan, even though he's down 2 0, almost made that reverse sweep. Yeah. But in the end, you know, did a fantastic job of Mysterious. Like I mentioned before, the most one of the most consistent players on the circuit, all those top three. Fancy's another one. He knows it, Look having a little face. wink. <laughs> Look at his, we can't really say no to that. <laughs> But even though with Duncan now, he's still got slightly road ahead, but one thing to take into account is the fact that he's a very, very consistent player, and I'm sure it's not going to be the last of him. And speaking of the last of some people, we have Jackie back. Hello. Yes, I've returned after that riveting series that we've just had finally closed out. Seemed like it wanted to try and be a slobber knocker again, and it did go quite a ways. But in the end, we have our victor, Mysterious, has picked it up. Expected or an upset? It's quite hard to say. I don't think it was an upset or like expected. I think it was very 50-50. Um, of course, Leroy made a very judgmental opinion before where he was like, you know what, depending Classic on the Leroy. bands or anything Classic like Leroy. that, Absolute you know, vintage. You know, it's going to be <laughs> but it's gonna be very 50-50. But as you can see from there, it literally did go down to the wire. Yeah, the whole hog. Again, a lot of lengthy series today. It has been a, a really packed day of Hearthstone, Leroy. And what was your takeaway from that? Well, as I, was, as I expected, it's such a so even, the matchups. Mysterious got the better half of the matchups early, and then Duncan just picked the decks that were a bit better going into Mysterious' final deck. Ground out a 3-2. It was so close in the end. Unfortunately, it's just uh, it's gone Mysterious' way on the day. Yeah, I was going to add to that as well. You know, it's like I mentioned before, some people do have that struggle with that one deck. We saw it earlier, actually. Uh, with Paradox, with his Odd Warrior, he had a real yeah. struggle feeling, but you know what, I don't think things are going to go my way at all. But, you know, those matches were way too 50-50. There was no way he wasn't going to take out at least one. But if he didn't, then that would have been a bit of an upset. Yeah, it would have been, obviously, if we saw the uh, the Green Sheep Worthquake, the 3-0. <laughs> Wouldn't have been great, but they did keep it packed. It was spicy. And something else that is spicy is a lovely bit of gear from Logitech that you too can grab yourself. As you can see on screen, you can head on over and get involved with a giveaway. Leroy, you use exclusively Logitech products, don't you? Yes. Yes, I do. <laughs> he wants to play uh, Hearthstone on uh, 144, 144 Hertz. hertz. I need yeah. all of the Hertz I can get when I'm playing Hearthstone because it's such an intensive game. You want to see every single pixel of the card. You want to take in that stare detail. deep into the cards and, and really respect them, and they'll respect you. Trust the heart of the cards. Heart well, of cards. luckily enough, we have a player detected up on stage. We've warded it. She's found them. It's Frankie. 
I have indeed found him. I wouldn't let him go anywhere after that dramatic win. It's your fifth time in the Halfstone Premiership. We wouldn't have it any other way. How are you so consistent on this stage, Mysterious? I don't know. I'll say I'm just lucky, probably. But no, I practice a lot, honestly. So practice pay. And you had your aggro decks. You were confronting Duncan's more balanced lineup. What did you make of his approach? Well, honestly, my lineup was slightly favored against Duncan's lineup. So I knew it was a tough match for him. Uh, and I managed to run my rug into his warlock. So it was, it was fine. I almost threw the, the last game. But other than that, no, I'm pretty happy of my uh, series. But you were a top seed going into this. You came through the Swiss groups 3-0. You could have chosen to play Big Ben. You chose Duncan. Why? Well, I, I didn't have much choice because uh, Destro had a better tiebreaker than me. So he get to choose Falcone first. Then I had uh, the choice between Duncan and Big Ben, my teammate. So obviously, I picked Duncan. Well, congratulations. We're going to see you tomorrow in the upper bracket of that semi-final. But that's